units in the hierarchies of the Queen Mother, Diana said. The Queen Mother is connected to a long list of brotherhood groups and societies and she is the head of the Inner Temple, the elite and highly secret society for the upper levels of the legal profession on the former Knights Templar land at Temple Bar in London. It was the Queen Mother and her close friend, Diana's grandmother, Ruth Lady Fumoy, who manipulated Diana into the marriage with Prince Charles. This is why Diana was given quarters at the Queen Mother's home, Clarence House, in the weeks before the wedding and she left from there to marry Charles at St. Paul's Cathedral. Diana used to tell me that the Queen Mother was evil, Christine Fitzgerald said, she actually used that word, evil. She said she hated the Queen Mother and the Queen Mother hated her. Most people in Britain will be astonished to read this because the Queen Mother's propaganda has turned her into the nation's favorite grandmother. Oh yes, the Queen Mum, such a lovely, gentle, kind old lady. But this woman is not what she is claimed to be. I can't emphasize it enough. During her time at Clarence House before the wedding, Diana says herself that she was being given drugs like the antidepressant, Valium to treat her bulimia. And what else were they giving her? They drugged her, Christine said, I am sure of it, they had her doped from the start. Christine had many conversations with Diana and she opened her heart about her nightmare life with the winged source. But Christine's contacts through her work have given her access to other sources with inside knowledge of the British royal family. This was the first time Christine Fitzgerald had talked publicly about her experiences with Diana and what she knows of the reptilian agenda. She told me, the Queen Mother. Now that's a serious piece of wizardry. The Queen Mother is a lot older than people think. To be honest, the royal family hasn't died for a long time, they have just metamorphosized. It's sort of gloaming, but in a different way. They take pieces of flesh and rebuild the body from one little bit. Because it's lizard, because it's cold-blooded, it's much easier for them to do Frankenstein's asterisk than it is for us. The different bodies are just different electrical vibrations and they have got that secret. They've got the secret of the microcurrents, it's so micro, so specific, these radio waves that actually create the bodies. These are the energies I work with when I'm healing. They know the vibration of life and because they are cold-blooded, they are reptiles. They have no wish to make the earth the perfect harmony it could be, or to heal the earth from the damage that's been done. The earth's been attacked for zeons by different extraterrestrials. It's been like a football for so long. This place was a bus stop for many different aliens. All these aliens, they could cope with everything, including the noxious gases. They're landing all the time and coming up from the bowels of the earth. They looked like reptiles originally, but they look like us when they get out now through the electrical vibration, that life key I talked about. All the real knowledge has been taken out and shredded and put back in another way. The Queen Mother is chief toad of this part of Europe and they have people like her in each continent. They are just in awe of these people because they are so powerful. But our moral is a very, very nasty place. That's somewhere they want to dig underground. They will find reptile fossils, it goes back that far. Don't think of people like the Queen Mother and Queen Victoria as different people. Think of them as the same person which after a while has had to replace their coat. When the flesh dies, that energy, while it's dying, will be immediately up someone else's jacksy backside. It's very vampire, worse than vampire. They are not going to come to you with hooked teeth and suck your blood. Fear is their food, they can actually take fear and manifest it into a tangible thing. The clears the vibrational current. At that vibrational current, they can manifest anything from anything. It's like a holographic image. We are all minerals and water vibrating. This is all an illusion we are living in. That's the secret. You know when the monarchy's fallen, it's not the end of it. They will manifest in another form. The reptiles have never been defeated and this is the closest they have come to it. The reason they are so threatened today is because the earth is in such trouble and the mental power of people is returning. 
This is their most frightening time, but this is not going to kill them. There are long centuries before it's over yet. The difference this time is that it will be more difficult for them and they are going to have to settle for less and the Earth people are going to get more. But even though these reptilian ones are a group of stars, they are sad, pathetic beasts really, while humanity is galloping towards light. They're just pathetic lumps of mischievous who aren't going to win. Bill Cooper said that the initiates that he met in his work for U.S. Naval Intelligence had no conscience, no morals, no regrets, no feelings, no emotion. This is precisely the same character profile as the Windsors and, according to all the people I have met who have encountered them, the character profile of the reptilians of the lower fourth dimension. There is a reason for that, of course. The people have been hoodwinked for thousands of years. Hoodwinked about their history. Hoodwinked about who they really are and the true nature of life. Hoodwinked about the true background and agenda of those they have allowed to rule them. Therefore, that this word should also derive from Freemasonry. Dr. Albert Mackey, the 33rd degree Freemason and foremost Freemason historian of the 19th century, defined the term hoodwinked in his Encyclopedia of Freemasonry as a symbol of secrecy, silence and darkness, in which the mysteries of our art should be preserved from the unhallowed gaze of the profane. The human race has indeed been hoodwinked.